the Jewish channels we can review. Will the ultra-Orthodox be drafted into the Israeli army as soon as this fall? The rabbi who's declaring Jesus is kosher? The story behind the kosher treats loved by so many? And more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. Ultra-Orthodox Jews are more likely than ever to be required to serve in Israel's armed forces after an Israeli Supreme Court decision declared the ultra-Orthodox service exemption unconstitutional. While service in the armed forces is compulsory for nearly all Israelis, two main groups have long been allowed to avoid service, the ultra-Orthodox and Israeli Arabs. Public opinion against the ultra-Orthodox exemption has been growing for years, and opposition has been more vocal in recent months, with ultra-Orthodox violence and harassment in the news. The so-called Tall Law, exempting the ultra-Orthodox from service, is set to expire in August of this year, and a Knesset battle over whether to renew the exemption is expected. In a 6-3 to three ruling on Tuesday, Israel's Supreme Court has now ruled that the law cannot be extended in its present form. Israel's Supreme Court works differently from that of the U.S., and this case was not a traditional lawsuit. Rather, the Supreme Court was responding to a petition filed by an advocacy group asking the court to rule on the law, and the court did so. That's a change from 2007, the last time the tall law was extended, when the court reportedly did not rule on a similar petition. Now, the ultra-Orthodox need a new law to exempt them from service before the current one expires in August if they hope to continue to avoid conscription. Many prominent leaders of Israel's most popular political parties have vowed not to extend the law as it currently is. What remains to be seen is whether politicians will create a different kind of exemption. We'll know more in the march toward the tall law's expiration in August. Meantime, for those who've been following news of ultra-Orthodox gender segregation and thinking it would only be an issue in ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods in Israel, there's news that you might find a gender barrier constructed on your next flight to the Holy Land. Israel's Channel 2 newscast reported on one recent trip in which, quote, ultra-Orthodox passengers set up partitions during an El Al flight from Belgium to Israel, which blocked some TV screens and, according to some of the passengers, emergency exit signs. The partitions were reportedly made from fold-up cartons brought on board by ultra-Orthodox passengers, set up to separate men and women passengers for most of the duration of the flight. According to the report, one passenger said the staff completely ignored it. When I asked the stewardesses about it, they said that it occasionally occurs and they just ignore it. El Al issued a response to the report saying, This is an unusual event and is not in accordance with company flight service procedure. We would like to emphasize that the flight safety was not compromised. The incident will be reviewed by El Al. Of course, one frequent flyer who's probably allowed to make his own rules on a plane is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And he's set to take flight for U.S. shores to meet with President Barack Obama on March 5th. Netanyahu will be meeting with the president after speaking at the annual conference of the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, or AIPAC. In a statement on Tuesday, White House spokesman Jay Carney said the president will also be speaking at the AIPAC conference. The AIPAC conference is well known for its long list of prominent Washington players attending every year, with at least a majority of Congress seeming to stop by at the annual conference. One man who might be hoping to join those ranks is Rabbi Shmuley Boteach. While he still hasn't announced whether he'll certainly pursue a run for Congress in New Jersey, he is unquestionably working to promote his latest book, Kosher Jesus, and he has some prominent Jewish figures backing him up, as Rebecca Honig Friedman reports. Newark, New Jersey Mayor Cory Booker, a Christian, teased his good friend Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, the author of Kosher Sex, at a recent event promoting Boteach's new book, Kosher Jesus. Mark and I were sitting in the back seat just conspiring about how to get you not to write another book about sex. <laughs> so uh, I'm very happy this is a book about uh, Jesus and, and not a book about my personal life. <laughs> But not everyone has been quite so happy about the subject of kosher Jesus, which applies a non-Christian reading to New Testament accounts of Jesus' life in order to reclaim him as a human, rather than divine, Jewish figure. In an interview, Boteach, who runs This World, the Values Network, and seeks to bring Jewish values to the mainstream, explained his motives for writing the book. Number one, I think we have to have a theological bridge in this new relationship between evangelical Christians uh, principally and Jews, uh, Catholics as well. It can't just be a political bridge 
for support for Israel and its security. There has to be the theological underpinning. I don't think that we can have a relationship that's based on ignoring the 600-pound gorilla in the room, which is the Jewishness of Jesus. That agenda has been controversial, and Boteach and the book have been denounced by members of his own Orthodox community, as well as by Jewish anti-evangelizing groups. Uh, we expected a lot of Christians to say, you know, this is not exactly uh, our traditional faith, this is not our traditional dogma, and you're teaching us the Jewish of Jesus, how does this accord with our existing beliefs? We didn't expect it from Jewish sources, especially with this kind of vitriol, but, you know, when you publish a book uh, or you make any kind of... Uh, idea statement in the public arena, you never know how it's going to go down, and, you know, so be it. In a panel format, Boteur discussed and debated the book and the controversy around it with some other prominent friends, Wall Street Journal columnist Brett Stevens, Harvard Law professor Noah Feldman, and panel moderator Jane Eisner, editor of The Forward and host of TJC's The Salon. Feldman, a constitutional law expert who studied at Oxford when Boteach ran the local Chabad center there, provided what he sees as the context in which kosher Jesus should be understood, perhaps poking a bit of fun at Boteach. I think it's important really to see your contribution as, you know, in the same way that in the 60s we had Jesus, the radical gorilla, and in the early part of the 20th century when the United States was becoming a global empire, we had the muscular Christianity of Jesus. Now we've got Jesus as, you know, Shmuley Botev, in some sense. You know, a, a, nationalist committed, a, na a nationalist committed traditionalist Jew who's interested in reaching out across communities. But Brett Stevens, foreign affairs columnist for the Wall Street Journal and former editor of the Jerusalem Post, was skeptical of Botev's agenda of finding common theological ground for Christians and Jews. If you want to get into bed with one another, okay, um, but dim the lights. Um, because you don't want to look too closely uh, in this, or examine one another's faiths too closely, lest you recoil at what you are um, uh, what you are seeing. For more on Kosher Jesus, watch the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Rebecca. Another prominent Jewish salesman is the founder of Tofuti, the brand that serves so many dairy-free treats popular with observant Jews who want an ice cream-like dessert after a meat meal. Meredith Gansman reports. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Except for the millions of Americans with milk allergies, or lactose intolerance, that is. But even they can satisfy the craving for a creamy frozen dessert, thanks to the Jewish entrepreneur behind Tofuti. Since February is National Lactose Intolerance Awareness Month, I'm taking you behind the scenes and inside the dairy-free land of the Tofuti Company. Meet the man that licked the dairy market with products made from fermented soybean curd, or tofu, a staple in many Asian cuisines. Before founding the Tofuti Company in the late 1970s, David Mintz was a kosher restaurateur in New York. The clientele came in, they wanted me to do catering, which I did, and they said, well, we want for dessert, uh, we want ice cream. I says, I can't serve ice cream because we're strictly kosher, we're not kosher. He says, well, it doesn't matter, we'll buy the ice cream. I says, no, there's no way. My food can't be with, uh, with the dairy product and with my dishes. Anyway, and I lost a lot of sales that way. Mm -hmm. People said they want ice cream. After reading about tofu in a health food magazine, Mintz went to Manhattan's Chinatown neighborhood to try it for himself. Tasting tofu, it was the most awful thing you could taste. It was like biting into a pillow. I mean, it had no taste whatsoever. But this serial entrepreneur turned food scientist hoped these magic beans would deliver the answer for dairy-free desserts. So how does he do it? Machines like this turn tofu into tofuti ice cream. But that's all mints will give away. Mints will let us in on the origins of the name of this frozen treat, however. Tofuti's name was inspired by the fun nature of ice cream. Confetti is fun. So I took tofu and I sort of added confetti to it and it became tofu. After perfecting his frozen dessert, Mints continued on his mission that anything dairy, tofu can make dairy free. But competing for consumers inside supermarkets' frozen food aisles is still extremely difficult. We had opposition from everyone, everyone, especially the big, the big uh, ice cream companies and the dairy people. But then the power of the consumer, they, they tasted it, they wanted it, 
And the, uh, that's what really helped me uh, get the products in. To see more from my tour through the Tofuti factory, tune into the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. Thank you, Meredith. That's all for this week from all of us here at the Jewish Channel. Be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 528, IO Optimum Channel 291, RCN Channel 268, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, Cox Channel 1, Frontier Communications, and now on Comcast Cable in the on-demand menu under Premium Channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.